If you're new here, my name is Akuya Daniela and you are watching Town of Tawia. A town which embraces the intersecting identities in the black community. If you want to educate and enlighten yourself, I think you should subscribe. I really do. In today's video, we're going to be discussing something that has been circulating the internet that has been sparking a lot of controversy. If you don't know, just look at it. Is black women who wear wigs that are little, kind of out there, kind of beat up, not all the way situated, they tend to attract rich white men. <laughs> now, if you are not in black woman TikTok, you may not be familiar with the bad wig interracial relationship lore, and there is lore. White men are not checking for black women in interracial dating, mating relationships with one notable exception, and that is a thin, conventionally thin, black woman wearing a bad wig. It works. A few minutes later. You look amazing. Thank you. So, you know, I don't often uh, discuss personal personal situations in detail. But I, would, I, would, I was vulnerable in a video. I was. I was truly vulnerable. Um, and I expressed that I was on a date with a guy. And um, on that date, the guy expressed that he felt that I seemed like the type that would date white guys. In, which, this isn't the first time it happened, but this time was significantly more shocking. Because he was a white guy. And see, it was that day that I almost retired from this earth. Oh my gosh. And even the topic of this video makes even what he was trying to imply may even be worse. <laughs> The way when he said that I was looking at my hair, I said, what is wrong with my hair? I thought I just did it fresh. To be fair, I didn't. <laughs> my hair is always, from the first day is done, my hair is always in a constant state of new growth. It's okay. I embrace growth. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. I like braids and I like growth. Let me stop defending myself. Also, personally, it's not even true. It's not even statistic. Well, it's not statistically true. Like, you know, there's, I usually, okay. But we're going to get into this topic. So today we'll be talking about what seems to be a touchy subject on the internet right now. Interracial relationships, particularly as it pertains to black and white people. We'll be dissecting the hard wig soft life theory oof, that explores black women who date white men. The black queens forever, snow bunnies never. I said black queens forever, snow bunnies never. I said black queens forever, snow bunnies never. That explores black men dating white women, as well as the great history of interracial relationships between black and white people, and how that really affects our understandings of these relationships today. And of course, we can't forget that I will be asking you the question, can you be pro-black? and date outside of your race. So clips have been going viral where black women have observed that most of the black women that, that date white men, specifically wealthy white men, tend to have the appearance of wearing a disheveled wig, very um, poorly installed wigs. And due to this observation, there's been so many trends where people have been trying out this hard wig theory, putting on their, their terrible wigs and trying to bag themselves a wealthy white man. And honestly, on the surface, it seems to be just a bit of harmless banter. Okay, well, there is one issue, which is that the idea of bagging a white man suggests that his whiteness is a trophy, which doesn't sit too well with me. The, the viral trend also often blurs the difference between dating a white man and a wealthy white man. As the captions was often teeter between wearing a hard wig to bag a white man and wearing a hard wig to bag a wealthy white man. The idea of trying to bag a rich white man can have reasonable societal implications that with his wealth and his white patriarchal advantages, these women would be able to benefit from this by essentially setting a system that was made to work against them and playing it in their favor. However, by stating that they dress this way to simply bag a white man, which really could be any white man, it doesn't necessarily mean he would be rich. It's implied that he automatically would be a good man or a rich man at least, which is of course not always the case. 
attribute whiteness to wealth in a way that doesn't seem to be social critique but more of an enjoyment of such a narrative by perpetuating and engaging with it okay but let's talk about the wigs themselves why hard or in essence bad wigs often the hardness slash badness of the wig is due to it being a clearly plastic and synthetic nature that does not even attempt to create the illusion that it is their natural hair coming out of their scalp it is often stiff and does not have much motion and to have that extra flair it is extremely terribly roughly installed almost painfully placed on the head creating the appearance of a disheveled woman some might read this as mysterious while others might see this as a scary lady but guess who gets the payoff in the end by benefiting from a life of luxury as a woman who is taken care of I use the term payoff here to refer to what seems to be her ideal lifestyle of, of a paid for life of luxury where she can do little to no work and essentially just look like this full time and while this is not a life i would necessarily want to live that is one that seems to be at least at the surface bringing many black women joy and for that reason i'm not entirely mad at it so my initial assumption of why these white men loved the bad wigs was kind of <laughs> based on the same reason a lot of white men love a messy bun or you know that freshly woken up natural look it's kind of a um an obsession or a fascination with women's natural beauty a kind of um the aesthetic of a woman who puts in little to no effort um which definitely appears to be very popular in the the white male the white male community however this is not the only theory and there are much more sinister theories that some black women have expressed um rooted in unfortunately historical truths i have a bad wig theory yes it's funny uh, but also i think there's a little social science to this men trust a woman that signals through her ostentatious grooming habits that she is likely to conform to traditional gender roles now, why would white men like this in a black woman? Well, black women are not generally in the beauty hierarchy considered women. Shout out to my queer theory, folks. We are masculinized for lots of reasons. Skin tone, physical features, height, weight, but really because of the overwhelming power of the controlling images that say that black women are not legitimately feminine women. Then you add to the fact that few white people have, according to data, a non-white friend. All this adds up to a reality where white people don't have a lot of exposure to black people, have a low expectation of black women as being feminine, quote unquote, beautiful in a way that conforms to gendered social norms. You put all that together and they have no idea how to judge the femininity or social acceptability of a black woman when it's time to date one. And they don't know what we do. How many times you, a black woman, a sister, has shown up for work and had white people go, dang, how long did your braids take? 28 minutes? I know, mama, this took two and a half days. Thank you for playing. They have no way of judging the amount of time and effort that goes into a black woman's beauty and grooming ritual. And wealthy men in particular really value this sort of performative investment and in competitive beauty standards because it signals to them that you will keep trying to stay beautiful. And that is the deal with most men, but in particular with very wealthy men. Wealthy people are deeply invested in the traditional gender division of labor. So if a white man is attracted to a black woman or desires a black woman, he would like a black woman who does an ostentatious to him, legible to him display of female grooming. So he doesn't care that the wig looks bad, but what he is valuing is that, oh, they see that wig, right? This is a woman who is signaling, I will spend hours a day, whatever it takes to stay quote unquote, beautiful according to you and your social expectations and I will consider that my primary job in this relationship and she's got to work really hard that sister to prove it because again she's starting at a deficit people already think that black women are not feminine enough so you put that bad wig on top of your head and it says see how willing I am to conform 
<laughs> not just to your expectations about race, but to your expectations, more importantly, about gender. So believe it or not, that sister in a bad wig is doing some peacocking that is perfectly tuned to what wealthy white men are probably looking for and are able to translate. Okay, hard wig, soft life, yes or no? That's not actually the question. You need to be asking why, why does it work? It is not because these guys don't care as much about beauty standards. It is not because they're too naive to know what to expect from black beauty standards. It's because if you cannot meet those beauty standards, as far as the black cultural expectation goes, you are marking that by wearing a bad wig. That signifies to them as outsiders out of the community that you are not backed or well connected to the community very much. Because if you were, your wig would be laid. You would have the connections, the resources, and the cultural reinforcement for that to happen. You are signifying, for better or for worse, realistically or as a ploy, that you are, oh, so vulnerable and disconnected from the rest of Black culture. They want a Black woman. They don't want the Black culture. You know what I mean? You are a Black body, very beautiful, very appealing, very attainable, but you are not empowered. Your ancestors are not walking with you. The community is not walking with you. You don't necessarily have all of these people surrounding you that come from the standing on 10 toes that the Black culture may come with. Therefore, no judgments from family, from community. You don't have a group chat, yada, 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 because if you did, your wig wouldn't be looking like that. They know. They know they know and to corroborate with some of these claims do you remember the clip where theo von says why he doesn't often date black women because he finds them to be intimidating specifically he feels that he isn't good enough for them they don't they don't like you come on to you like i i've never had sex with a black chick it's like it's kind of like you really gotta be good at what you're doing right it's kind of intimidating. Yeah, it's like, I don't know if I can handle it, bro. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. It's like, kind of like, do you want this jail? Like, yeah. I don't think I got this. I don't, I'm not that guy, bro. You know what I'm saying? I, I would, but I don't think, I just don't want to, it's like, I don't want to under, you know, I'm all under right. Rum. The, yeah. It's a little tickler. It well, these are theories would align with such statements because how much more intimidating would it be to be with a bl black woman who clearly has close ties to her blackness and therefore is more likely to have been around a, a, a plethora or numerous black people and as a result, numerous black men and you know how the stereotype goes with what it's like to date a black man. So if a black woman looks like she is even remotely connected to her ties with black men or that she even remotely has a chance with black men, there are many white men that wouldn't even try to compare to the stereotype of what's in their mind of what they believe the black men available to her could give them because they're not capable of giving that based on the stereotype they have in their mind. And therefore, a woman that looks disconnected to her blackness by clearly not knowing how to keep her hair, which is a huge part of black culture, suggests that there's not many black people around her to show her the way. And if there's not many black people around her, there's not many black men around her and therefore, he has a significantly higher chance of not being compared to any black people because it seems like she's not around any. Therefore, the likeliness of a woman who looks clearly willing to assimilate to whiteness despite all the greatness that the black community has to offer, a woman like this would likely worship the feet of a white man if they're re willing to reject their own culture to appease to his beauty standards thus feeding these white men's egos and easing their intimidation by playing into a form of submission but that leads to the question why is there such a craze and huge conversation around black women dating outside of their race there have been many studies over the past decade that have harkened the statistic that black women often remain single in the West and are less likely to get married or remarry than white men and other ethnic groups. In the US, for example, there's a discussion of how in 2011, seven out of 10 black women are unmarried. While this doesn't seem to be alarming under the assumption that many of these black women may just be choosing to be single, many social critics suggest otherwise by raising many of the sociological implications of this including the fact that many black women are more likely to settle for less due to the fear of not being chosen at all as they are the least likely to date outside of their race 
Such narratives are often reinforced through the media and on the internet, as I have previously explored on my channel. In essence, many black women have stopped waiting to be chosen and seem to be taking their marital fate into their own hands by doing what it takes to live the luxurious life that many of them have wanted due to being tired of dealing with misogynoir, colorism, and biases that are projected onto them both by mainstream society and for many from people within their own community. However, some black men aren't too happy about this as they express discontent on how this topic is being is being engaged with and they are demanding answers as to why black women can feel safe and confident to openly discuss that they are looking to bag a white man while they often get berated and cancelled by even insinuating or suggesting that they have a preference or a seeking to date white women and therefore they're essentially seeking answers as to why it's such a light-hearted conversation for a lot of black women yet it's such a heavy and scorned conversation when it's with black men and they demand the answers and i've got them for you the most common argument for why many black men are often criticized for interracial dating is because there's often an assumption that their choice is rooted in texturist colorist views while many black women have partaken in this um hard wig soft life trend playfully often when the conversation is reversed and black men, men are having conversations about dating white women it very quickly turns into an opportunity to absolutely berate and just dog on black women as a whole based on some biases, stereotypes about their attitudes, conversations of their insufficiencies and all of the, the issues that black women have in relationships and what they need to work on what, and why they're just an absolute menace to date and why they will never find love and it just turns into a whole list of everything wrong with black women women and why they will remain single for the rest of their lives like they deserve for their behavior and then it leads to an emphasis of white women in, for example being their ideal partners due to the way in which black women behave or innately are essentially many people challenge such statements by suggesting that in moments like these black women are just as discriminatory towards black men except i beg to differ in the, in the latter video, for example, the lady is expressing a bias that she experiences from black men while simultaneously expressing her interest in them. So essentially, her critique, which again, is a social critique, is based on a critique of a prejudice that they show towards her. So it's not her criticizing a stereotype, it's her criticizing a societal issue. However, when this conversation is the other way around when black men are actively looking to pursue white women and it's very often a conversation of generalized personality traits that are an issue with black women or issues pertaining to their appearance such as having an attitude wearing the fact that they even wear wigs or wear artificial hair this idea of black women being too demanding having too high expectations having no class which is a very funny one because I noticed videos, people finding videos of black women drunk and then saying, yeah, this is why none of the men want you. But then I saw the funniest comment and it said, it's called white girl wasted for a reason. <laughs> and I was like, this is the perfect example. There are um, perpetuated narratives that are rooted in uh, single experiences, right? Single experiences. And even if there is a whole cultural phenomenon that um, completely negates the idea that black women are the worst at a particular thing or are the most bad at a particular thing, even if there's a whole cultural phenomenon, a whole cultural, cultural discussion that completely contradicts that narrative, to justify this idea that black women are not good enough and to reinforce this inferiority complex that many in this conversation in particular black men have they they rely on essential stereotypes that literally aren't even supported by truth and many of these sort of complaints about black women are often embedded in colorist texturist colorist texturist and anti-black views so this would be through statements such as i don't date black women as opposed to opposed to i'm trying to bag me a rich white guy okay let's talk about this alternative in this discussion black love now, I personally am a huge believer of going where you are loved, regardless of what that looks like. However, I am not of the delusion that the construct of race is something that should be completely ignored and is completely insignificant to take into consideration when dating, because I just don't simply think that that would be a very 
um, ignorant way to go about dating. Because unfortunately, it is a factor, whether we like it or not. And if you are not conscious of that, you can find yourself in some very uncomfortable situations where someone who you think is getting to know you for who you are as an individual may have another agenda that you didn't take into consideration. So what is the big deal about black love? And why do interracial relationships specifically for black and white people seem to be made into such a big deal? It's not that serious, right? Well, let's get into it. Well, for starters, the sociological history of interracial relationships is painfully muddy. In Randall Kennedy's text, Interracial Intimacies, Kennedy emphasizes that slavery constituted the principal backdrop against which whites and blacks encountered one another for uh, over 200 years. From the 1660s to the 1800s, some commentators insist that that, that that there can be no such thing as sexual intimacy between a black enslaved woman and any white man, a slave owner or overseer. According to this view, slavery created an extreme dependency that precluded the possibility of chosen as opposed to unwanted sex. As a result, all of the sex that took place be- between enslaved women and white men constituted some form of sexual assault. So when you take into consideration that these are the earliest representations we have of interracial relationships between black women and white men, it's important to understand why there may be so so much skepticism around the authenticity of such love. Despite such happenings taking place centuries ago, we have to understand that our history is heavily influential to how we navigate our day to day. The fact that systemic racism still exists to this day and many of the racial imbalances that existed haven't changed. And unfortunately, such abuse of power is still a topic of contention in many interracial relationships across the world to this day. I know personally many people who express to me that they are the result of a white man exploiting a black woman's vulnerability or where they're the product of a black father they discuss that they are most definitely and it runs in the family with the black men in their family definitely a product of colorist and texturist views from the black men um, who are seeking to have children that have better features and vice versa. It can go both ways across genders. And such reservations for interracial relationships are often furthered by what many refer to as an attack or a war on um, the black family unit, which highlights how an agglomeration of absent fatherhood, infidelity, lack of marital status, a high number of single mothers, and overall observations of the conflict of black families that is rooted in the disorder created from the effects of internalized racism has affected how many people in the black community perceive black love as something that is not worthy. For this reason, celebrating black love is not just an exclusionary statement uh, about avoiding interracial relationships. Instead, the preservation of black love symbolizes a pride of black culture, our history, our roots, a rejection of racist stereotypes and expectations and a reverence of our ancestry and so much more. While I don't personally believe it should be an obligation to date within our race, I certainly feel that it does carry weight to have forms of representation and value the significance of the black family unit and of black love in general. So am I of the black queens forever, snow bunnies never train? Well, it does make me chuckle, not quite. And I definitely understand the sentiment behind it, but it does beg the question that I'm still fully yet to answer for myself, which is can you be entirely pro-black and date outside of your race? But I'm interested in your thoughts. My name is Aquia Daniela and you have been watching Town of Tawia, the safe space on the internet to discuss intersecting identities in the black community.